Welcome everybody, Brother Dan Goodwin here, your host, God's Final Jubilee Program. As you can see, two things have changed. I'm not in my studio at home, and I've got somebody sitting next to me. This is Michael Smith. Most of you have already met Brother Smith from my YouTube channel, or you've seen him, uh, him he and I on Prophecy News talking about his Cyrus Effect DVD. Well, tonight uh, we travel. My wife and I have arrived in Oklahoma City. We're going to be doing interviews tomorrow at Cross Your News. Brother Michael is going to be there with us. And we're going to do two shows tomorrow. We're going to record them for Cross Your News. And those will come on at a late, later date. I think the second half of June or something. Or Yeah, I think the heck, second half of June or something like that. He'll, his programs will be on. And uh, we're going to be talking about his new DVD, Joseph in Egypt, and how this relates prophetically to some very interesting end time events. So, so Brother Michael, uh, say, say a word to the audience there, if you would. Well, Brother Dan, I'm very honored to be here today, and uh, thank you for inviting me uh, back to uh, not only Prophecy in the News, but uh, to your blog and your live stream as well. All right, well, it's an honor. the honor is mine, and I uh, appreciate men like you who've got some knowledge and have uh, are very humble about it, and you are, you're one of the most humble people that I've ever met. Uh, you. you don't try to take credit, you don't feel like you're a big wig, and, and uh, you know, is, God will use us until we think we're somebody, and then God kind of, yeah. you know, God will share His glory with another. That's a, that's a hard thing for preachers. That's right. And uh, so I'm glad that you're here, and we're going to have a good time in the studios tomorrow, but tonight we are we're doing a live stream. Uh, you on YouTube, you don't know this, but uh, while we're recording this, we're doing a live stream, and there are folks watching via the internet on Facebook. And if you don't, if you're not on my Facebook page, go find God's Final Jubilee, and like the page, and you'll get alerts when I do the live streams. And uh, so we're going to do just a 10 or 15 minute thing here. I say that, and we'll go an hour. But no, we uh, we got to just be. I want to read a verse for you in the book of Genesis, chapter 37. Um, Joseph dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Jacob being 17, or Joseph being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren, and the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and with the sons of Zilpah. And I'm not going to read the rest of it here, but down to verse 5 it says this, And Joseph dreamed a dream. Now, Brother Smith, you wouldn't you would know this, but that was my verse that got me through Bible college. Sorry. I had a dream. And I used this passage. And, uh, you know, when I said people always attack a man with a dream, and they attack Joseph. He had a dream. Yes. And, uh, but I also said this, you can't stop a man with a dream. A guy that has a passion to do something, you can't stop him. And uh, now you said on the DVD that the story of Joseph is from chapter 37 of Genesis and it ends in chapter 50. So uh, uh, Joseph dreamed a dream. He told it to his brethren. There are some prophetic lessons in this story and you're going to share some of these with us tonight. Uh, I don't know if I can read this fine print on the back here without my glasses. But here's what it says on the back of, uh, of his DVD. It says, Joseph in Egypt is one of the most exciting stories in all the Bible. And I agree. It is, a, it is packed with prophetic golden nuggets from beginning to end. There are over 100 parallels between Joseph and Jesus. And I want to talk about that a little bit. Um, there's, there are. There's a lot of interesting things uh, that are similar between Joseph and Christ. And, uh, well, I'm not going to read the rest of it. But uh, these, uh, he's, he's brought some of these for us. We, uh, my wife will get these on the website, hopefully tonight. They're not on there yet, but GodsFindJubilee.com, you'll be able to order uh, these, and, and I have them. He brought me a box of them, and uh, that's wonderful. So um, these will be on the website if you'd like to get one. All right, now, brother, brother Michael, let's turn the, let's let's turn this over to you. Let's let's hear a little bit about what's on this DVD. Well, to start with, you know, uh, it tells us in Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10. God has declared the end from the beginning. And what I normally share with people is uh, the meaning, the real meaning of that, is God has declared the book of Revelation in Genesis. Mm -hmm. So all of the concepts of God's love for Israel, uh, His plan of salvation, uh, everything about the Messiah, 
in Concepts of Messiah, they're all embedded in the story of Joseph. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, the nation Israel, past, present, and even future, is embedded within the story. Wow. And so, of course, the story of Joseph's in the first book of the Bible, the book yes. of beginnings. Yes. And uh, now, in in the on the DVD, and I just listened to the whole thing a couple a couple days ago. I watched the whole thing again for the second time. Um, you talk about the fact that Joseph is mentioned from chapter thirty-seven to chapter fifty, yes. and you say that there's a surprise in, in chapter fifty. Do you want to share some of that about the coffin? Yes, I'll be more than happy to share that. Normally, when I go live before an audience, I normally ask a qualifying question at the beginning. And I ask them the question, why is it the book of, Gen the book of Genesis starts with uh, God and creation in the very last verse in the book of Genesis, which is chapter 50, verse 26, it's all about Joseph's tomb. Mm -hmm. And I asked the folks uh, to be thinking about that, and uh, and why is that? And at the end of the program, I'll let them know that at the end of the program, uh, they will know why that is. But essentially, uh, it is a type and shadow of the beginning and the end. In other words, Jesus is the Alpha, the Omega. Uh, also, I would like to say that uh, and I'm 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 kind of leading this into something very important here, uh, a little out of context perhaps, uh, but what happens is Joseph tells uh, his folks, someday the Lord will visit you and I want you to take my bones with you when you leave. Now I'm paraphrasing that. And he's referring to the promised land. Now we know that Joseph lives 110 years old to 110. Uh, and when you get into uh, the book of Exodus, we find out, and this is about 400 years after Joseph comes into Egypt, uh, there's Moses and the evil Pharaoh, right? Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, uh, Moses goes before Pharaoh, let my people go, uh, so on and so forth, and uh, let us go into the desert, you know, in Exodus chapter 5, it tells us that Aaron and Moses went before the Pharaoh and he told them that the Lord had met with them and the Lord wanted them to go out and worship him uh, on a feast. It talks about a feast in that chapter. Mm -hmm. On the third day, a feast. And uh, so, uh, I don't think most of the Jews knew exactly where they were going in detail uh, but anyway, finally the Pharaoh, the evil Pharaoh lets Moses go. And they're leaving uh, now. It's three days later. I want to go to the third day. Uh, they're up against the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. And now, if they're just going to go for three days, why is it that the evil Pharaoh is out to annihilate all the Jews? Now, and I have the answer for that, Brother Goodwin. And, and the answer is, when the evil Pharaoh sees that the tomb of Joseph is empty, he knows they're not coming back and he's out to destroy them. Okay. In other words, when he sees that they've taken the bones of Joseph right, and, and it's empty, right, and it's the third day, he right. goes to kill them at the Red Sea. Right. And the evil Pharaoh and all of his henchmen are all destroyed on the third day. Remember, there's an association with a feast with that day in Exodus chapter 5. Most people miss that. Uh, that's very important. So, what's it all about? Well, this is what it's all about. Uh, basically, if you could look at the evil Pharaoh like Satan, okay, right. he's out to destroy God's people, if you will. 1900 years later, uh, we have a similar situation with Jesus. I want to go back to Joseph just for a moment. He has a title in Egypt. Uh, he has a title, and that title in Hebrew is Joseph of Ramathayim. Okay, it means in English, uh, basically, Joseph of a high place. Uh, that's his title. No question, that is his title. So, uh, Joseph of Ramathayim. So now we go 1900 years later with Jesus, 
and Jesus is buried in the tomb, and his name that he's buried in that tomb is Joseph, right? Did you know, Brother Goodwin, when you transliterate Joseph of Ramathaim in the Hebrew of the Old Testament with Joseph in Egypt to the New Testament in Greek to the English language, do you know what you get? Joseph of Arimathea. And I do because I watched the video. Yes. <laughs> so, so, when, so there's a parallel. when Satan sees that the tomb of Jesus, who's in Joseph's tomb, is empty, he's out to destroy you and I. Right. And, and he has family. been for 2,000 years. Yes. That's interesting. There's a lot of, a lot of things you bring out just Thank like you. that. Um, let's see what else we got here. Um, and I had that here, I think. Um, Joseph, uh, the meaning of his name. Um, the dream. The dream uh, about the sheaves bowing down and the sun and the yes. moon and the stars. Tell us a little yes. bit about that. Okay, I'll be happy to. Uh, this is the dream that Joseph had, I think, in chapter 37, right? Uh, that he dream. Well, he. You're talking about uh, the sheaves bowing down. No, there's two different dreams. Right. There's the. In chapter 37, Joseph has two dreams. The first dream is he dreams he's in a field, and uh, he is a sheaf of wheat, and his brothers are sheaf of wheat. It's like he's in the middle of a right. circle, and their sheaves of wheat bow down to him. That's dream number one. Dream number two, uh, he sees the sun, the moon, and the stars in the second dream and make an obeisance unto him. Okay, so, well, what's, what's all that about? Well, I have to uh, give a little uh, foundational information here. Uh, anytime we read about the sun, it actually is referring to Messiah in the Bible. As an example, uh, Psalm 84.11, it tells us, For the Lord is a sun, that's an S-U-N, is a sun and a shield. Malachi chapter 4, verse 2 tells us, The sun of righteousness, this S-U-N of righteousness. So that's the authority for when we read things about the sun, the S-U-N, prophetically it's talking about Messiah. Uh, also, the moon... Uh, that represents the believers. Now you remember in Genesis chapter 1 verse 16 it talks about the greater light and the lesser light, of right. course, right? Uh, so uh, the sun gives off the light, the moon only reflects the light. So if the sun represents Messiah, who does the moon represent? The believers. So uh, we see that that dream that Joseph has about the sun, the moon, the stars, if you will, we see that in Revelation chapter 12, verse 1, right? right? The woman clothed with the sun, clothed with Messiah, with the moon under her feet, which technically represents the church of believers, okay? Uh, with the grafted in church, if you will. Yeah. Uh, that is what the picture is about. So, you notice he had two dreams. Uh, and there's a number of people having two dreams in the story of Joseph in Egypt as well. And of course, you remember the Joseph baby. the carpenter, he has a dream, take the baby Jesus to where? To Egypt, because uh, the evil Herod is killing, going to kill the children, right? In, in Bethlehem, in yeah. the way. And, uh, and then when they're in Egypt, uh, uh, Joseph the carpenter has another dream to take the baby Jesus back because the evil King Herod is now dead. So there's a lot of parallels uh, in these. And, in and the Joseph story. and Jesus both spent time in Egypt. Yes. And God used that. God used Joseph in Egypt to save the nation of Israel, basically. Absolutely. And He's going to use Jesus to save the world. Right. And the word, in, fa in fact, the word Joseph means increase. It also takes on a meaning of Savior. Now, savior of his people, not that, only nutritionally, yeah. uh, but spiritually through the world. And Lord's back to those dreams, the, the, sheaves, the sheaves bowing down before Joseph was fulfilled when his brothers came and bowed down to him in Egypt, is that right? That is absolutely correct. And, and they, all, they all mocked him when he, when he told them what, what that was. Yes. When he was 17 years old, 
they're not mocking them now, are they? That's correct. They're bowing down to them. That's correct. Well, that's some amazing stuff. Uh, there's a couple more things real quickly before we go. I wanted to, I know we, we can only hit a few things, but there's a couple of things that really got my attention as I was watching it. Um, we don't have time to get into some of them that I thought were very interesting, but Tamar, the 10 generations there, we don't have time to get into that. It's too much you have to explain, but... Uh, it is when, in the film, though, right? in great detail. Yeah, it's almost two hours long, and there's an interesting part about Tamar from, his, uh, from Genesis 38 uh, and the 10 generations. Really some interesting stuff there. Um, stuff that I want to I want to study for myself later on too. But let's end with let's just say something about Joseph and while he's in prison. Mm -hmm. And I joke about the baker, the butler, and the candlestick maker. But there's no <laughs> candlestick maker. That's right. That's, that's right. a different. That's a fairy tale. This is a true story here. Yes. The baker and the butler come, wind up in jail. Joseph yes. befriends them. They each have a dream. Joseph can interpret dreams. And these things all are used prophetically to bring Joseph into power under Pharaoh. Tell us just a little bit about these two men. I mean, you, you talked about uh, the two thieves on the cross, how they relate yes. to this story. Because what he's saying in the video, he's not just teaching some lessons, he's showing you, he shows us some prophetic lessons way back in Genesis with the story of Joseph that that some of them were fulfilled later on. Some of them haven't been fulfilled yet, but are going to be. Um, I mean, Revelation 12, is some of that's still coming here. So you talked about the two thieves on the cross. Um, you talked about uh, the two dreams that the two men had. Just yes. give us some of that. Okay. Well, obviously, uh, Joseph is put in prison over something he did not do. He didn't do anything wrong. Uh, he meets a butler and a baker in prison while he's there. And, and they worked you, for Pharaoh. They were that's Pharaoh's. correct. They worked at Pharaoh's court. Uh, obviously, they did something wrong. Uh, the baker or, or were would, accused of doing something wrong. Whatever. Uh, you know, worked with the food. Obviously, the butler though is a guy that actually tests the wine food or the tester, drinks that kind of thing, for yeah. the Pharaoh, and yeah. uh, that's what he does now. When you analyze their dreams, uh, and, and you'll find that in chapter 40, uh, the baker's dream deals with bread and the butler's dream deals with wine, okay? Yeah. And uh, so I want to go back for just a moment. Now, uh, these are elements of communion. Yeah. And actually, the very first communion in the Bible, Brother Goodwin, is in Genesis chapter 14 and 18, where Abraham meets this strange individual by the by his title is actually Melchizedek. Uh, it's actually two two Hebrew words put together. It's Melech meaning king and Zadok meaning righteousness. He is the king of righteousness. Yeah. And many people believe, uh, and I'm one of those people that believe that too. This is this is Jesus Messiah. Well, that's three Pre, pre incarnate. Right. Now, and I come to that conclusion because when you go to uh, Hebrews chapter 7, verse 1 through 4, it actually says some things about Melchizedek. Without mother or father. He had no genealogy, no, yeah. no mother, no father. So, those are some of the reasons that I believe it. But that's the first communion in the Bible. And then later in chapter 22 of Genesis, uh, we see Abraham where he's going to slay Isaac, of course, uh, in there. Uh, but uh, now, going to continue on. The story deals with the bread and the wine. Abraham with Melchizedek, the bread and the wine. Jesus at the Last Supper with the bread and the wine. Uh, Luke chapter 22. So there's a comparison. But I would like the viewers. This is very important uh, to look at it this way. I want you to visualize the baker on the left, and I want you to visualize the butler on the right. Now, within the context of their dreams, Joseph tells the baker, in three days, you are going to hang. And he tells the butler, in three days, you will be elevated back to your rightful place in Pharaoh's court. So, uh, the baker is destined to die, and the butler is destined to live. We have Jesus on the cross, we have the man on the left, 
who was destined to die in his sin. Yeah. And we have the man on the right, uh, this day you'll be in paradise with me. So there's there's a connection and there. And it happened on the third day. Yeah. And it happened on the third day. Now also, kind of, yeah. uh, let me go into, uh, we also know that three days later, and by the way, uh, the baker had something that we don't have. He had three days that for sure he's going to live. He was guaranteed for three more days he was yeah. going to live. We don't have that guarantee. We don't. We but but he did. Uh, so now, uh, we also find out that three days later, it's going to be Pharaoh's birthday. But I want to put it in context because it says in the Bible it's a feast. So on the third day that will be a feast, we talked a little bit about that earlier, didn't we? Mm -hmm. About when Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and talked about that. Uh, so uh, it's on the third day. So also, when you look at that story with Abraham, uh, chapter 22, where he's going to slay Isaac, uh, it's a three days journey. The substitute sacrifice takes place on the third day. Victory happens on the third day, and of course, uh, there was a ram found in the thicket, not a lamb. And by the way, in that same story, Brother Goodwin, when God told Abraham to take his son, he told him uh, to a place that I will show you, it will be Jerusalem, right? Uh, it's a three days journey, and when they, when they arrive, of course, uh, Isaac is carrying the wood up, up the hillside, if you will, and, but then it's like, well, Father, we have everything, but where is the sacrifice? And it says in chapter 22, Abraham says, God will provide himself for a lamb. Yeah. A lamb. And what happens is 2,000 years later on these same hillsides, Jesus is on the hill carrying the wood in the form of the cross, right? It's on the, th it's on the third day later that he's going to arise from the dead. It's on the third day. Uh, so there's victory happens on the third day. And also, uh, it's on the third day as the Jews are leaving Egypt. Uh, it's the third day that victory happens. Right. The cross from the Red Sea. Right. The swallow of right. Satan and his own. And by the way, let me say that put it in a Hebrew perspective. We know uh, when the death angel came, the night of Passover, right? It's the 14th of Nisan. This is the 17th of Nisan. Right. When they get to the Dead Sea to cross. Uh, so in other words, victory happens on the 17th of Nisan. It's the 17th of Nisan on the same Jewish calendar date that Jesus rose from the, grave. Rose from the dead. Well, listen, we're talking to Brother Michael Smith and we're out of time. And uh, I want you to know his, his DVD is just about two hours long. Joseph in Egypt is going to be on my website, godsfindjubilee.com. And uh, we hope you've enjoyed just, just this off-the-cuff brief uh, little discussion. Look for us on Prophecy News. We're going to be on there as well, uh, doing a couple of programs with him. And uh, Brother Michael, thanks for coming by. And uh, look forward to our time together tomorrow. Yes, sir. And all of you, we'll see you next time.